Jungle Talk. Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm Adam. And welcome to Meeple Talk. So this time we've got Lorenzo Il Magnifico, a Simon uh, production also by, I forget the name, Cranio, Cranio Creation, a uh, 2016 game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is one of our convention pickups as well. This one uh, grabbed at, uh, what was it? Origins, that's Origins. the one. Origins, you went there. Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. that was a good time I liked that. And mm-hmm. so this is one of the ones that we picked up for review. Uh, generally, how would you describe this game? Uh, well... You're basically a noble family in the Renaissance, mm-hmm. and you're battling for influence, I guess? Uh, uh, competing for influence? I would say battling. There's no real battle. There is a military, yeah. so yes, mm-hmm. uh, maybe in some cases battling, but yeah. you don't see that in the game. Yeah, it's, it's all behind a, the doors. It's just a military track, so yes. <laughs> that's as violent as it gets. So Yes, yeah. but this I would consider to be a classic Euro game. Um, yeah. it's, it's very interesting, and we're going to tell you how interesting. First of all, I'll tell you how to play Yep, let's look at the board. Okay, everyone, welcome to the game. Here we've got the setup. It's the board representing the city of Florence. This is where all the activity is going to be happening. And every character is going to be, well, every person, every player is going to be representing an entire noble family. We're going to scooch over here to what that individual board is going to be looking like. So everyone's going to start with their family members. You'll notice there will be different colors on some of these uh, pieces. They will represent, well, the corresponding die values that you're going to be rolling is going to determine their relative influence for particular rounds. You also have a neutral, which also serves as a way of uh, getting into extra places where other family members can't, doubling up or enhancing the influences, influences but you'll need to um, boost their values well because they start with a zero. Um, here we've got the main household. This is a family board where you're going to be collecting a variety of development cards of different types. So this is where you're going to be organizing those because each different zone is going to have different types of value or functions, whether certain cards give you uh, victory points or ability to collect resources or to do kind of exchange or other kind of influential moves. Uh, some of these resources that I mentioned here are going to be your wood and your stone. They could be in the form of servants. They're going to be helping you with your influence too by increasing your die values for your particular characters. And also going to be using uh, money along the way uh, to help you in your different achievements. If we go back to the main board, back to the city... Well, I mentioned those development cards. They are represented here in these four towers. So your different types of cards uh, where you're going to be placing your characters to try to collect. Uh, Turn order is decided here. Uh, So as the game progresses, turn order may very well change because as you place members in certain zones, that's going to be deciding uh, that particular order. Uh, You've got your Vatican as well because you want to pay attention and make sure you uh, demonstrate your faith which is going to be represented by this faith track here. So don't forget to do that because you may have some excommunication penalties uh, if you don't uh, show enough. Uh, Also you've got because every uh, uh, influence in the town is not only represented by your good show of faith but also your relative strength so your military might. Uh, This is what this track is going to represent too. Uh, the stronger you are, it may determine things like victory points you get at the end or your ability to collect other types of cards. Uh, so make sure you can, um, you know, score high along there as well. Uh, I mentioned earlier the large dice. Uh, well, that's going to determine in any given round how influential your family members are going to be. Uh, and also when you collect resources, there's a few ways to do that, either with cards. Uh, you can also place members here along the market. That will give you certain one-off uh uh, collections for those. Also, uh, with depending on the type of buildings you have, you can either do uh, production here, represented by this zone, and also your harvest there. So that could also give you more resources or other functions that you can complete. So overall, not a complex setup uh, when it comes to pieces and components, a very nicely laid out game. And that is the overall layout. So then we move on to how to play the game. Uh, As Stephanie mentioned, this determines the turn order for any particular round. And so what players will do is they will take turns placing their family members. And literally, those are four actions right there for each player for each round. And that is your entire round. And there are six rounds in the game. So these uh, four family members... Uh, their values will be determined by these dice. Now, the first player will roll these at the beginning of the round, 
and that will be the value for every family. So there will be a orange one, black one, a white one, and this um, odd looking player, which is wood colored, is a zero all the time. So these will be placed in the various areas to score points or to get cards and that sort of thing. So for example, you could place your character in the market and you'll see that every action has a die with a pip on it. So in this case, you would just need a one or higher on the value of your family member determined by that die in order to put it there. So basically any family member could go in any of these markets places except for this character, which is automatically a zero, but you can enhance him by uh, paying a servant or using a servant that you have. So then he would become a one, for example. Um, so uh, at the bottom here we have these very important actions and this is where you get into engine building. So here we have the harvest action. That requires at least a one. So let's say I put this one on here. So that's a six, right? That's the value of six. So when we play that, we'll show you on the character board what actually happens. Um, so here we see the uh, harvest action and you'll get these three resources whenever you use the harvest action when you activate it with your family member and also any cards that you've collected um, will also have an action that will be uh, triggered if your uh, die for that character is equal or higher than in this case we have a five but the six is what the white die is the one we use so this one would be activated so this player would get two extra military might and one extra stone for example and if there are any other cards that are six or less in this case, those would also be activated. Um, the production house, again, also has that same ability where you would get uh, whatever the production shows here plus any of the cards that are activated. So these are kind of engine building and very interesting parts of the game. Um, we don't place anything in the Vatican. This is based on the faith that you earn on various cards and then um, you would add your faith here. The important part of the Vatican during the game is that um, for every two rounds, one of these cards is activated. So after two rounds, this one, uh, if any player has less than three faith, then they will suffer this uh, penalty. This will be considered excommunication. So for the rest of the game, for example, whenever a player collects gold, they will get one less in this case. On the fourth round, you need four faith, in, uh, or there, otherwise you are excommunicated in this way. Uh, you suffer this penalty, and this is at the end of game. Um, another action you can take is you can place your family member in the council palace. The council palace determines turn order number one, so the first player who can go there um, will uh, be the first player. The second player will be the second uh, on the next round. That will determine this turn order. And also they will get various resources that they can choose at the bottom here. And finally, uh, these family members can be placed in the towers. And that is how you would get these cards. You'll notice in the towers that each level for each, uh, each tower has a pip. Here is this value of 1, value of 3, value of 5, and so on. And once again, when you place a family member of a particular value, here's the orange is representing 4. So this orange player, if the, nobody is in this tower, could go at the one spot or the three spot, but not the five spot, unless they want to add extra points to that pip with servants. So that's basically how you would get the cards. And one thing to remember is when you choose the cards, it, you, you can't simply take the card. If there's an extra value, you have to uh, pay that as well. For example, this card requires an extra two a coin and an extra to wood in order to claim that card. So first you have to get there and then you have to pay the extra resources. Um, these green cards don't have any cost, so just placing your family member there will allow you to claim them. Um, and the play continues around the board for six rounds, each player playing all of their family members. And, and at the end of the game, um, we would add up all of the victory points. You'll see some cards have victory points at the end of the game. There are other cards in this middle section. These actions happen when you choose the card or when you claim the card. So this player would add five victory points to the victory point track uh, during the game when they pick up this card. And there are other collection bonuses. If we can move uh, back to the player card again, this is another way you can earn victory points. Depending on how many blue cards you have, you will earn this many victory points at the end of the game. So once again, whoever has the most victory points at the end is the winner. 
All right, so that yeah. was how to play the game. What did you think of it? Well, you know, okay, so when I first saw it, uh, I'm a sucker for a sort of medieval mm. renaissance kind of art and design and things like that. So when I saw the box cover art, of course, that shouldn't be the only thing you just look at. But I was really, mm. really impressed with it. Uh, Theme-wise, it's very fantastic. Um, although, Adam and I were discussing this earlier, too. It's entitled Lorenzo, uh, but... He doesn't appear anywhere in the game. So theme-wise, it's a little amiss, though, because I can understand Renaissance families. You're trying to have this sort of sense of intrigue and influence and things that you're trying to accomplish in the game to create the most powerful and influential family through the different connections you can make through industry, through the church, and through other ways. Uh, but uh, a specific naming of Lorenzo, the character, uh, sort of was almost irrelevant in a sense. Uh, but that's okay. <laughs> we need a title. Uh, so... But, and the thing is, too, uh, one of the things we didn't mention in the introduction is the actual style of game it is. So, as you can probably gather from it, it is a strategy game, and it is a more um, complex one or a difficult one uh, to do because you are going to be subject to a lot of uh, chance, a lot of decisions in the moment. So, even though you may need to gather cards in specific orders because some of them may complement each other so you can hopefully get something going whether it's a certain type of production engine or anything else uh, you'll need to get things in maybe certain orders and certain combinations that may not always happen because you're going to be subject to uh, the dice rules uh, because that's going to determine how much influence a particular character may have or how much boosting you're going to need to do with your servants so you may find Certain limitations, also turn order is going to affect you. It could be that if you choose uh, to show demonstrate your faith or not, you may have different drawbacks by your excommunication uh, tokens. Uh, so it is going to be a lot of trying to balance your long-term plan with the short-term obstructions that come up. You're going to be very mm -hmm. in-the-moment decision-making, trying to make it all work. So it makes it quite... Uh, challenging or tough to do. Um, I don't think, however, with some games who tend to throw you in too many annoying ways where you feel like you're just frustrated the whole time, and by the end of the game, you have to either win or don't win, you're like, that was not worth my time. This isn't it. Like, this one is a very satisfying game, in my opinion, because I've played this a few times where I've won, I've lost, but at no point did I want to just forget the experience and just say, you know what, I'm done with this thing. It's too frustrating. Mm -hmm. No, thanks. Uh, I think it's a very worthwhile game. And, and, but it, but you have to keep in mind too, that, um, maybe as an intro game might not be a, a good one, maybe to start with, because it's not an easy one. Although the, the rules don't seem very hard to, to just go through and follow. If you've got a group of people or different levels, it may not be everyone's cup of tea. So you've got to keep that in mind. It, it mm. does seem to have a little smaller audience, but for the audience that it, uh, it, it serves, I think it does it really, really well. So I myself, mm. uh, quite like how this one, uh, turned out. I can't really think of mm. a whole lot in the way of, of drawbacks. Yeah, yeah, so um, my opinion that's similar to that is that um, the way I would describe this game is um, when you set it up, it feels mm -hmm. like a medium strategy game, like a, a pretty middle of the road in that term, in that way. But when you play it, it feels like a heavy game, um, mm -hmm. like a heavy strategy game. So, you know, when Steph mentioned that, you know, you probably wouldn't want people who are casual gamers to mm -hmm. play this. And that's very, very true because... There's a lot of very deep strategy and some difficult decisions to make. Mm -hmm. um, even though you only have four family members and your only actions are to place them, um, placing them triggers all sorts of different other actions. And there are certain things that have to be done in a very specific order. You know, for example, just claiming a card, you have to think, okay, so I need a particular die roll. And if I don't have it, I may have to enhance that with, with servants. And then once I've gotten there, then there are certain costs associated with that card and can I pay that cost and then once I have the card that's gonna you know maybe it's an engine card for example this is a production card so then that's gonna go into my production slot um, and and then you have to think okay so but the production is a is a five so it's gonna be hard to put a die there and activate that card and there's all these different decisions you have to make in order to optimize your your engine, right, which is going to be develop, uh, you know, generating your victory points. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of game, and in, in the, the depth of the of the decisions that you have to make 
is, is what makes it for me a very heavy game. Yeah. Um, but I think that the design of the game is brilliant in that sense because most heavy games take forever to set up and they're very complicated in the sense of you know learning the rules and uh, all of the different parts. And you know, if you haven't played it for a week, then you have to kind of go through the rules and mm -hmm. figure it out again. But this game is very elegant in that sense yeah. that there's it's very light on components. It's, it's, it's relatively light on the rules for a heavy game, mm -hmm. but wow, there's a lot of depth in it. Um, I will say though that the um, the, the theme, like I'm, I'm, I like games that are very thematic. I feel that, like Steph's you mentioned, you know, it's it's branded as uh, Lorenzo, but mm -hmm. you don't really see Lorenzo. They could have totally, you know, picked four different houses and maybe they had different abilities. And in fact, in some cases, for the advanced game, um, mm -hmm. your productions and your uh, harvest does have slightly different actions um, depending on what side uh, you use there. But um, I think overall, um, it is definitely an in-the-moment sort of game. It's not a long-term strategy game because mm -hmm. things are changing so quickly, and players, you know, if you don't, if you're not, um, if it, if you're not the first player to play, um, other players will put their family members in those yeah. areas, and then to put another one in there becomes very expensive. So a card that you may say, oh, I'm going to get that card, and then someone else might take it, mm -hmm. and then your whole strategy changes because. Your engine often might be just three or four production cards if you're going mm -hmm. for a, a production engine or a harvesting engine. Um, there might just be three key cards, and you can't predict it that you're going to get those, um, or, oh. or, or they'll be going to be available when you want them. Because so. one thing we forgot mm -hmm. to mention is that in every single round after you place your four, these cards that you haven't been used are gone. You're right. getting a fresh new layout, and mm -hmm. so because they're all done randomly, that same type of card you may have played in a first game may have been easy to grab, but in a succeeding game may have been placed at a mm -hmm. higher level. So it's very hard to anticipate or predict or even think that that chance that you're going to have is going to still be there. So it's really now or never. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's uh, that's definitely by design. Yeah. So um, I think the game is, is very well designed. Uh, I don't think it has any real problems. It's really mm -hmm. a matter of what kind of gaming group you have. If you've played heavy games before and you mm -hmm. like them, then you should definitely try this one out because this one is very elegant and it's different from other games I've played. It, it just has a very interesting combination of mechanics that work really well together. Yeah. You know, and the idea that you roll dice and what values you have depend on the dice, but everyone gets those dice, mm -hmm. right? There's only one set of dice for everybody. So it's not like, you know, you, you suffered from the luck of the dice, everybody right. suffers. So in that sense, it really levels the playing field. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I think it's a great game. I wish it had a more of a theme um, than it does, but you know, no game can be everything for everyone. So um, I definitely would recommend it. Yeah, and I would too. So I would say, you know what? Come check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's our review. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yep. Come see our other videos. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.